With Pickford disappointing in the opening couple of game weeks and Johnson and Turner now becoming potential rotation risks, a lot of people are looking for goalkeepers for game week five and beyond. So I thought I'd put together the ultimate video to help you select the correct goalkeeper. And here are our five goalkeepers that I have potentially selected as replacements for Pickford, Johnson, Turner, or maybe you're on a wild card and you are looking for that optimal goalkeeper pick for the next kind of couple game weeks or up until around game week 20 when maybe you are going to look to start to potentially play your wild card again i've selected five goalkeepers all from different price ranges we're going to have a discussion if you do have any questions or enjoy the content leave a comment like and subscribe as it does help the channel but yeah let's get started obviously one of the popular picks this season is leno as you can see 11.3 percent one of the popular 4.5 million picks he's done okay in terms of fpl scoring picking up nine 19 points so far but for me personally I think him and Fulham assets in general are a real big avoid they just haven't looked very good as you can see from xg conceded as well they have the most on this list by a clear country mile as well 11.2 expected goals conceded so I wouldn't be expecting too many kind of clean sheets from Leno or points in kind of that regard over the next kind of couple game weeks he is predicted to get 10.7 points which is the the second highest in this list um but that is mainly down to fulham's fixtures kind of being really good for the next four they obviously play luton and sheffield united within their next four game weeks so maybe we might see a little bit of a revival but last season as well they were one of the like worst teams for xgs conceded in the league that trend has continued into this season as well, leaking goals for fun. Obviously, Manchester City absolutely dominated them as well. Everton could have had a hat full of goals. That's where Leno picked up 12 of his 19 points as well. Picked up those in a bulk where he saved, I think it was nine shots, a clean sheet, and obviously free bonus as well. So that's where a majority of his points come from. So I think if you are looking at Leno, yes, the short-term fixtures are great, but I wouldn't be targeting a Fulham defense, to be honest. I wanted to include him just so we could kind of go through the data so you could see why he is not an optimal pick for kind of future returns. He is the second highest point scoring goalkeeper at the moment in the uh, in the game, I think, or maybe Vicario's top and Ariola's second. Leno might be third, actually, but he's the second highest in this list anyway. So I just wanted to put him in here as a potential avoid and not a player you should be looking to target just down to the fact that that XG conceded is ridiculously high and the majority of his points came from an absolute thumping you know against Everton that didn't quite go their way in the end but Leno managed to pull off some amazing saves so I think that is the good thing you do get with Leno though he is a good shot stopper but that clean sheet potential is absolutely abysmal and with him conceding so many expected goals it's not a defense I'm personally looking to target it. Moving on to the next player, a completely different scenario. As you can see highlighted in green, it is Edison who has the best XG conceded, the most clean sheets so far this season, and the highest expected points over the next three game weeks. I think he is just a very solid pick. He has had a price increase to 5.6 million, so he is potentially going to be a little bit difficult for a lot of people to go for. I didn't realize how highly owned this guy was as well until making this graphic earlier today. 20.9% is ridiculously high for a, such a like a premium goalkeeper usually i'm someone who that doesn't really like to go for these premium assets but i think manchester city have been super effective at the back as you can see with their xg conceded they look very solid this season kind of picked up from where they were last year i can't see them conceding many goals over the campaign but i think as well the other thing that kind of goes for edison's favor is this year there's not as many like premiums i know like some people are talking about potentially bringing salah in but i think that's potentially going to be a decision for me around my game week nine wild card i know he has been a very consistent performer but he's for me still not warranting that 12 and a half million so i think there's a lot of budget left to play about with in your teams this year so maybe going for a premium goalkeeper like edison city such a strong defense you know in terms of clean sheets and expected data as well so maybe it is worth going for it the only thing the only kind of downside really to edison is the fact that he's not going to pick up save points you know city kind of stop the ball from kind of leading two shots and shots kind of on target so it's not really going to be an issue for edison to pick up too many extra points in terms of saves and bonuses so you are just banking on a clean sheet a six pointer it's not very exciting and i think it kind of limits 
his potential i think if you can get the five or the 4.5 million goalkeeper right i think you're going to have such a better experience in terms of points and just general funness as well it's a bit boring supporting city's clean sheets isn't it moving on to our next defender and defender sorry goalkeeper it is the highest uh, point scorer on this list and the second highest point scorer in fpl at the moment it is Ariola, the kind of surprise package this season obviously a lot of people didn't expect him to play it looked like Fabianski was going to maintain his kind of position as first team goalkeeper for West Ham United but that hasn't been the case Ariola has stepped up and has been delivering had a phenomenal game against Brighton as well where he picked up a, up a majority of his points extremely highly owned as well 28.3 percent I think this might be a good one for people that potentially have Turner only 0.1 mil extra and you're getting a goalkeeper who's playing week in week out for a team that absolutely loves to play a low block under David Moyes as well very good defensive coach very good at kind of keeping clean sheets not really allowing teams to kind of have fun we saw that with Bright uh, Brighton game as well with Ariola, I think that just that bottom price, he should be 4.5 million. So you're getting him for an absolutely ridiculously cheap price. So maybe freeze up a little bit of budget if you do need it. But like we said earlier, I don't think budget constraints are too much of a worry this season with a lot of the kind of premium assets not really firing on all fronts. Ariola and Edison are kind of the two that I think I'm potentially looking at. I'm in the position where I have Johnson and Turner. So I think in the like next few weeks, if one of those gets dropped, I'm going to have to start looking for other goalkeeper options. And these two and the next two that we're going to come on to talk about are probably my favourite picks to go for. So let's move on to the next one. It is Emmy Martinez. Now, Aston Villa's long-term fixtures are amazing. Up until around game week 15, I think, is when it starts to turn a little bit. But it's still, you know, Villa are an exceptionally good defence. Obviously, Unai Emery is a fantastic defensive coach as well. Always seems to get the best out of his teams. And Emmy Martinez, a World Cup winning goalkeeper for only 4.9 million. Getting yourself into that Villa defence as well, which has looked very secure at times this season. Obviously, I know they have European football as well, so there probably is going to be a little bit of rotation. But I do feel like Emmy Martinez has that number one jersey on lock at the moment. 6.3% as well, so would be an extremely good differential and gets you into that Villa defence. I know a lot of people want to try and get into it. They're looking at potentially Matty Cash. I know Moreno's coming back from injury as well. A very popular asset towards the back end of last season with a lot of attacking potential. But I think Emi Martinez, for me, is kind of standing out as I think when European football does start to kick in, I think we are going to see quite a bit of rotation within that Villa back line. We're going to see players come in, out, in, out. You know, Ezri Konza can slot in at right back. They've also got Luca Digne who can play at left back as well. So there's going to be rotation for those players. Where do you feel with Emi Martinez? You know, this really good fixture run that they have from around game week eight up until around game week 15, you know, I want to I want to have as many Villa players for that run. Probably going to be looking at two minimum, maybe three, but I think rotation European football two is probably going to be the the kind of limit. And Emmy Martinez is one of those that I'm looking at. Obviously had a price decrease due to his injury, down at 4.9, an extremely big differential as well at 6.3. So one of my favourite picks this year. Obviously not picked up the points so far, but with Villa's fixtures turning good and him fully fit and back and firing, I think he is a great shout as a potential option to go for as a Pickford or Johnson or Matt Turner replacement. Moving on to our final goalkeeper, it is Flecken. Now, for me personally, I'm not going to go for Flecken. I just think I've got Rico Henry. I don't really want to double up on the Brentford defence, but I don't think if I think if you don't have a Brentford defender, I think he's in, a, in like a really easy way to get into this defence. They've obviously got a terrific record against top six sides as well. And as you can see from the XG conceded, 4.46 is ridiculously low for a team like Brentford. Every year we say this, it seems like, oh, that's ridiculously low for a team like Brentford. Or I can't believe they're putting up these numbers. They are a really well-drilled side, brilliant tacticians, brilliant kind of data users as well. So, you know, Flecken has obviously there was question marks around him in pre-season, but I think he's he showed that he's a very solid goalkeeper. 4.5 million. Like I said, I think if you haven't got Rico Henry or potentially another Brentford defender, then I definitely think I would be looking to target Flecken. Only 2.9% owned. Gets you into a really good defence, not in terms of just clean sheets, 
but in terms of underlying data as well. He's going to pick up save points as well as, you know, Brentford do concede shots, unlike Manchester City, but they don't concede high volume shots or high XG shots as well. So you are expecting to pick up some save points and clean sheet points, and they have a fantastic record against top six sides. So if you don't have kind of a playing goalkeeper on the bench as well to kind of rotate in and out, you can just play Flecken every single week. I imagine he'll do pretty well, to be honest. You know, like I said, they do have a very good record against top six sides. Those were my five goalkeepers, four that I would be looking to target and one that I would argue that you should be looking to avoid. Maybe I'd only go for Leno if I was looking to wildcard in game week nine. Go for the short kind of term, term fixtures. Hope that he can manage to pull off some clean sheets and Fulham's defence can improve massively. But... I'm very doubtful and I think you should potentially go for one of these other options. If you have any questions about your team or goalkeeper situation, do leave them in the comment section below. Make sure to like the video as well as it does push it out and it absolutely means the world to me. And we're trying to hit 2,500 subs on the channel and that would be absolutely amazing if we could do that by the end of this month. So do go and smash that subscribe button. But thank you very much for watching today, ladies and gentlemen, and enjoy the rest of your day.